Hi, my name is Tage Singh. I'm broadcasting from New Jersey on behalf of Stanford Online High School students from around the globe. So, hello world. With us here today is Mr. Chuck Rubin. He's a CEO of Michaels. Yeah, it's such a pleasure having you on the show. I sincerely appreciate your time. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So I, I was, you know, I read an interesting Forbes article. I, you know, I told you about this before. It was, you know, and one thing that, you know, it was so interesting reading about, you know, Michaels and how your industry is run. And so an interesting thing was they talked about coloring books, you know, now adult ones, they brought in $40 million in revenue last year. That's a new trend. And Rainbow Loom, it was a product a couple of years ago that brought in $100 million. So it seems like your industry really, you know, values these type of trends and they, you know, it's make a lot of profit off that. So how is that a challenging um, thing to guess, you know, what people will like a couple of months from now and how does that process work? Yeah, well, you know, our business is really about creativity. So we sell in an average store more than 40,000 different items. And they're all items that you can put together to create whatever you have in your imagination. So the items that you just talked about, coloring books and rainbow loom, are just a couple of those items that really became very hot. So they became very trendy. And yeah, we are very good at finding those trends and being able to bring it to our customers. But our business is a lot bigger and a lot more uh, interesting than just those couple of things. So we work pretty hard. We're the biggest in this industry. We're the biggest retailer of creative products uh, in the United States as well as Canada. So we're really proud of when we pick up on those hot trends like you just said. But we're also really proud of the everyday business that we do in art supplies and in yarn and in kids product and home decor and everything in between. And it's a really intriguing, you know, type of business because, you know, so much creativity involved that it impacts so many people's lives. What's the most exciting part of your job? You know, the, uh, first of all, I love retail. I've been in retail a very long time and dealing with the public and leading big groups of people uh, is something that I really enjoy. At Michael's, our particular business, though, because it's about creativity, is about a fun thing. So the things that we sell are not things that people need, they're things that people want. And I like shopping at a supermarket or shopping for clothing or, or you, know, uh, the pharma, you know, the pharmacy business. Our business is about things that people want to buy because they have something creative that they want to do. They want to paint, they want to make their own jewelry, they you know, want to decorate their home and they come to Michael's and it's a kind of a happy shopping experience and participating with the customer in that happy shopping excursion is kind of a fun thing to do. And we have 55,000 people between the United States and Canada that work for Michael's and uh, it, it's kind of a fun, a fun job for them to interact with the public on those kinds of shopping purposes. And so you just talked about how, you know, you're in retail for a long time, you know, you were the CEO of Ulta Beauty before this. And so I, have you noticed any differences in between the two industries in general, whether that's more of like cosmetics and beauty and this is, um, you know, creative, just not necessarily obviously in the products, but more in terms of the culture, the way, you know, every, the business interact or how the consumers shop or their mentality that you have. To yeah. And there's actually a lot of, there's a lot of similarities between the two. So first of all, most of the customers at Ulta and most of the customers at Michael's are, are women. So you have that commonality. Cosmetics and creative products that we sell at Michael's are also both fun, fun categories that people generally like to shop for. And at Ulta, you know, we sold products that made everybody feel better about themselves. They, they would feel better, they would think they look better, and that made them happy. Well, the things that we sell, people are putting together to create something that they really like and have, have some passion about and have great pride in it makes them feel better as well. So. You know, there are clearly differences in the, in the product specifics, but there's a lot of commonality in the customer base and why the customer shops. Yeah, it certainly makes sense. So what does the average day look like for you? Is, I know I'm sure no two typical days are the same, but, um, you know, are you a type of, you know, an executive who does lots of meetings or is it more hands-on? Do you visit a lot of stores? Uh, it's all of the above. One of the things I love about retail, and by the way, I started in retail when I was in high school. I start, started selling shoes and... Uh, I've been in retail for the most part ever since then. Retail is a business that is just always changing. Every day is different than another. So uh, literally today, I led a meeting for our top 350 people in the company. Then I was in another meeting uh, to talk about our long-term strategy. Next week, I'll be traveling in stores. 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, I traveled one of our production facilities. We were the largest custom framer in the world and we own our own production facility. So I was touring one of those. So every day is different and I interact with large groups, small groups, board of directors. Yesterday we had our earnings call. So I was interacting with investors and Wall Street analysts. Uh, and that's what makes retail so much fun. And that's why I'm a big advocate for young people like yourself who are looking for something different and you're not, ju not just a, an office job or a desk job, but something that you can, you can have so many different jobs and so many different functions and learn so many different things and yet still work for one company because a retailer has all those different types of functions. And, and for me, that's what has been uh, really great about my career. So, you know, you're talking about going to stores. What's that like? Do you, um, you know, do you notice, do people or employees often recognize you or is it interesting getting that unbiased insight if they don't or what's the atmosphere like? Well, it's kind of it's kind of funny. I, when I visit stores, sometimes they know I'm coming, and in that case, you know they they you know they don't get the CEO visiting all that frequently, so they kind of get the store all ready to go, and it looks extra special uh, when I get there. But there are a lot of times that I go into a store unannounced and on a weekend. So uh, my summer vacation this year was a road trip that I took with my family, a long driving trip. And on the road, when we would see a Michaels off of the highway, we would quite often pop into the Michaels. So I popped in, in a t-shirt and shorts, a baseball cap, unshaven, with my kids uh, and my wife. And they didn't, you know, the, the store didn't know that I was coming. They never knew that I was there, but I would walk through the store to get a sense of how we were presenting our product and the kind of service our team was providing. So I do them both. I do them announced and I do them unannounced because at the end of the day, my job is just as, as focused on providing a good customer experience as the, that person that works on the sales floor in a store or a cashier in a store. So it's important that I see what's happening. Yeah. It's certainly like an episode of undercover boss. I love that. Right. Show. You can watch it. Right. So, I, and I've, I've seen the show. They've asked me to be on it. I have not done it. Why, um, why didn't you be on it? It seems like a cool type of thing, right? And it's also, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a cool kind of thing. But, um, uh, you know, I spend my time in stores doing the real thing. And, you know, that's a little show busy for me. So I, I haven't decided to do that. But and it's certainly, maybe someday. Yeah, and it certainly paid off. I you know read in the article that, you know, you're in the stores and you now, since – Michael's has such an emphasis on actually brick and mortar rather than online. There's been lots of changes to our store, which are bringing tons of customers. Like, uh, you know, they were talking about red signs, bigger mm -hmm. signs to direct customers to you know, the areas more often. So, you know, the efforts you put into the stores are certainly paying off. Um, yeah, the, so, you know, the, our business is mostly uh, store based, but we do have a nice online business that's growing very quickly. But the nature of what we sell um, makes this more friendly to a, a, a brick and mortar, an actual physical store. So we've done a lot of work. Uh, our team's done a really good job of, of improving the shopping environment for our customer. We, we still have more work to do, but I'm very proud of what we've accomplished. Certainly. So moving on to our high school segment, because that's where most of our audience um, you know, is. Mm -hmm. What was your high school experience like? Do you, have, do you remember anything particular that still impacts you today or you know, any lessons or any teachers that you remember? Well, I'm not, I'm not that old. I still remember my high school days. So, you know, and I have, I have uh, one, my, my son is in high school now and I have a daughter that's in middle school. So I'm reliving a little bit of it through them. Uh, you know, my high school days were um, just different than, than they are today. There wasn't the digital age. There was nothing like what we're doing today. Um, it had some pluses to, to what kids go through today and had some minuses. For me, you know, I was a pretty studious kid and, and worked pretty hard and and uh, played sports, but, you know, I didn't socialize as much. And I think I took my my studies more seriously uh, at the time than I, as I look back, I wish I had enjoyed a few things a bit more. So suppose you had, let's say, 10 extra hours a week to spend as a high schooler. Um, you know, is there anything in particular you would have done, like, you know, join this particular club or... Uh, spend more time on one activity? Well, you know, I think um, one of the things at least that I've experienced through my own kids is that there's a much greater focus on volunteering today than there was when I was in high school. And in, in the case of my kids, they have seen so many things that they, they don't normally see and that I didn't see when I was growing up. You know, different, different groups that uh, they just don't get exposed to every day. So if, if I was back in high school and I had those 10 extra hours, 
I studied enough. I wouldn't study anymore. And I had my part-time job and I, I used to sell shoes. I, I wish I had actually volunteered more and, and just, you know, help those who were less fortunate than I was or help people learn English as a second language, whatever, whatever it may have been. Um, I, I think it's great that kids today are much more focused on that. Back when I was in high school, it just wasn't, it wasn't such a focus. In fact, it wasn't a focus at all. Yeah. And it's also a great cause too. So. Correct. So now moving on to you know the fun segment. If you could spend a day with anyone from history, uh, is there anyone in mind who would uh, you know, that would come to you? Any day from history will even open up to the present day. Just uh, anyone. Let's see. I that's a good question. You know, in my uh, in my career, I've met a lot of famous people, and and uh, um, uh, well, one person who I met who I greatly greatly enjoyed was Muhammad Ali, who just passed away recently. He was. He was everything that he's reported to be. He was incredibly personable and, and pleasant. Um, I, I think, you know, some of the presidents, I'm from Boston originally. So having met, you know, if I could go back and meet JFK, I think that would be uh, quite an experience. Um, uh, I think I'd probably leave it at that. Probably JFK yeah. right now. So now, now moving away from a particular person to an event, is there any event you wish I mean, you could have been involved in or just witness that comes to mind? Uh, wow. I mean, there have been some monumental events. The, you know, um, when the wall came down in, uh, in Europe, you know, back in Ronald Reagan's era, I guess it was, you know, that was, I still remember watching that. That would have been an incredible experience to witness. Um, uh, you know, obviously I, I'm, I'm old, but I wasn't alive during World War II. There were such traumatic events then of, of both victory and, and uh, you know, terrible events that happened. Living, you know, watching that um, would have been uh, would have been something. Um, you know, I am old enough to have lived through the latter stages of some civil rights actions and activities, and, and that was phenomenal as well. So, you know, I think I'm a big believer that what we are today, we have been created by history that has come before us. So I've read about many of these events. I've seen pictures about many of them, but actually having lived through them would have been would have been quite impactful. So let's move to a segment called This or That. You'll have, you know, just uh, two choices, just answer it in a one word or a couple of words. Okay. So would you rather have one wish granted today or three in 10 years? Um, one today. Would you rather be able to shop uh, or in a store or online shopping, which one do you prefer? I uh, actually like both, probably in a store. Would you rather be able to stop time or fly? Stop time. Would you rather be able to read everyone's mind all the time or know their future? Uh, wow, that's a good one. Um, uh, read their mind. Would you rather win an Olympic medal or an Academy Award? Olympic medal. If you could be the CEO of any, uh, in, is there any particular sport? Uh, just curious since the Olympics were, did you enjoy a particular sport while watching? I know swimming, I love swimming. Yeah, I love the swimming. Um, um, I love, my daughter's a volleyball player, so I enjoyed watching the volleyball. I like the gymnastics, so a lot of it. If you, Good. So if you could be a CEO of any company other than Michael's, uh, what would it be? Uh, well, I've been pretty fortunate. I've been the CEO of a couple of really good companies and I was the president of another really good company. Uh, the CEO of any company, I think a professional sports team, I set up from Boston, I think, uh, the Boston Red Sox. If I could be the head of the Boston Red Sox, I think that'd be pretty cool. Certainly would be. And so our last question, what's the best professional advice you've ever been given? The best professional advice, um, listen, don't be afraid to be wrong. Make sure that you surround yourself by the very best people that you can find. You know, what a great note to end on. So this brings us to the end of the Pixel Talk. We'd like to thank Mr. Rubin for graciously uh, sparing his time here and inspiring not only the Stanford OHS community, but youth around the country and perhaps even around the world. Thank you.